everybody, it's Allie Edwards and welcome back to December Daily 2022. Today I am working on my story number seven. Review from yesterday, we did, or I did, a little story about taking the girls dress and shoe shopping. Played around with the fun uh, print there from Liz Tominaha. Uh, old six from my stash. I've got the two four by four cards on here. Now we're moving into day seven and then you see the same basic design here of this one, right? I'm working on vellum so I wanted to keep it the same from one page to the next in terms of where the main elements of the page were. That's why I did the rub on here along the bottom. I had already done this during my foundation pages. And page number seven or story number seven had one tag set up and then um, a couple other ones here that were already stamped. This I did during our prep day this year where both Laura Wansick and I uh, did 10 journal cards. So came up with 10 different ideas for journal cards and these were, <clears throat> excuse me, two that I did. One here is a shaker pocket. This is actually using a page protector, like a three by four page protector. I did uh, sequins on the inside there. Those are also from the, the Diary of Bell Rose. And then I added one of the die cut words on top with one of the little puffy Santas. And I also did some stamping with the circle stamps on the inside and did, uh, let's see, what is that? Uh, embossed, those are embossed on the inside. And then over here, obviously one through seven embossed stitched along the top and then this is one of the lined papers. This little piece here is from a set of Tim Holtz label stickers with red on the outside edge there too. So my story for today as I was thinking about what what is the story that I want to tell today and really what's real for me right now is that everything feels like a giant mess. So you might be in the same place as me. And I I don't know, you know, this is probably, it's a combination of lots of things for me, right? It's, we have a big family, everybody's here this week, that always increases the mess. Uh, we've had transitions over the last couple of months with people moving in and out of the house. Isaac left for college, he's uh, Aaron's oldest son. And uh, so we started moving some of the rooms around so that the girls could have their own individual rooms now. And so we've got a couch in the entryway downstairs and we still have things that are left over from that because Elliot moved into Isaac's room. So some of those things we are still in transition because Simon is going to be moving out later in January and so we're kind of waiting. Anyway, we've got a lot of stuff around here and sometimes for me, even outside of the holiday season, that stuff can just be like it can be claustrophobic feeling, right? I know you guys are with me on this. Uh, but I've also done really well, I would say, and learned over the years, especially after coming into a blended family, that it is what it is. And so I wanna say embrace the mess, but at the same time, I don't wanna embrace the mess because not only do we have the moving mess, but we have the Christmas mess. And so the Christmas mess includes, you know, all the tubs that are out of my office here, the messiness of my desk from working on this project along with some other projects that I'm having or that I get to, that I get to work on right now. So I'm just feeling like I'm in that space where everything is a giant mess and I really just need, I need a couple free hours <laughs> to pick some stuff, I was gonna say shit, pick some stuff up, right? I need to pick some stuff up uh, around here. And so what I decided to do for my story today is document the mess. Just a little bit of documentation of the mess. Uh, if you have been around my memory keeping style for any length of time, you have probably seen that I don't shy away from telling the stories of, of the things that are real in our lives. And that includes the mess, right? The mess is what is definitely real uh, in my house here. And I'm running with it. I'm running with it. So what I want to do here is I went around the house just briefly. I got a picture of the couch in the entryway. I've got a picture of my desk here. And then I also have a picture of the tree that is half lit because I was waiting for some additional starlights to come, which they did arrive yesterday. So now that's something that I can complete. This is not really as, as much a part of the mess, but I wasn't sure how many photos I was going to use. My plan here, I trimmed these to, I think they're one and a half by 2.75. Just double check that, yeah, 2.75. And I'm gonna trim that out, and I'm just gonna put them directly on the fronts of these two tags, and then leave this one blank. So I'll have two tags with photos on them, and then I will be able to write a little bit about my story. So 
One thing I want to talk about before I dive into that portion is that this page is a great example of a foundation page that I set up in advance. It's very Christmassy, right? It's got the fun little shaker page. It has one through seven. It's got memories. It has some Christmas sentiments along the bottom. There are a million different stories that I could tell with this foundation. And I like setting myself up with some foundation pages like this, right, where I've already done all the embossing, I've already created the shaker pocket there, I've already done, you know, more embossing. These were, these were making journal cards with stamps is what this, uh, time was during prep day and that's still available. It's $5 if you want to buy all of our prep day content, lots of great um, hours of great content included in there, included the how to for how I put these, uh, how I created these tags using the stamps. So reminder is not only are we, can we be translators of ideas related to products, but we can be translators of ideas related to stories or related to foundations, right? That maybe your story today, maybe you're you're following along with me pretty close, and you're you're have you have some sort of a similar foundation here, but. Maybe your house isn't a mess, or maybe the you know a story of a mess isn't relatable to you in one way or another, or it's just a story that you don't want to tell. You can easily tell some other kind of story here. I could have told the story of the shoes could have gone on this day, right? Or I could tell the story of a favorite ornament on this day, right? The base of it is, I'm gonna say generic, the base of it is festive, right? The base of it relates to being in the holiday season, but the story that I'm gonna tell is specific then to the photos that I'm including in there. So let's go ahead and cut these up and then I'm gonna add them in. Now this one, let's see, this one I think is, it's temporarily adhered enough, but I think I should be able to write right on top of here. Um, also, as a translator of ideas, things, you know, you maybe you don't want to emboss, maybe you just stamp one through seven on there. Maybe you don't stitch, maybe you just put a strip of washi tape along there, right? This is when we get into being a translator of ideas. We, you know, some sort of pattern on the top with a strip there. That would be something similar, put a little embellishment on top, leave space for yourself to write uh, there. Maybe you don't wanna do a pocket, so maybe this actually just ends up being a photo page or a, a photo, and then you have the, uh, the word art on top of it. That's also something that you can do. Okay, I'm gonna dive in and I am going to trim out my photos. I'm gonna adhere them on here, and then I am going to do my journaling. I'm not gonna put anything on the back of these. Sometimes I do that in these, uh, in, in when I have tags like that, but I think for this day, this is gonna be good enough. Okay, so I'm picking out a couple word, little word arts, or word arts, word phrases, phrase stickers from, from the little sticker pack this year. These are always some of my favorites, and you might have noticed that I grabbed my floss again because I really like the look of just one little stitch on here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that just like I did on the canvas word uh, the other day. This is, is tight on here, lots of adhesive that it's going through. So I'm just gonna come back up through the back there. Anyway, it just gives it that nice little bit, uh, little pop of red on the white that I just adore. It's like one little step that just is, I don't know, it gets me, it gets me. And then I think on here, I'm just gonna tape it on the back again. This is something I don't really care about that it's that it's blank on the back, but if that bothers you, you could easily just add uh, another photo on the back, or you could put pattern paper on the back. You could have journaling on the back, right? What does what does your own individual story need? Is the question that you should be asking yourself. What does my what does this story need? Does this story need uh, more words? Does it need fewer words? Does it need another photo? Does it need no photo, all kinds of options. 
One thing I also wanted to say is, I know lots of you saw my just foundation page video earlier, uh, or last month, and we're gonna get to a place here, it's kind of after the 12th, I think I have, I think I have things kind of set up. We've got eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12. So the next few ones coming up are kind of set in terms of their design. And then we go into a number of days where we don't know yet. And I kind of love that because it's gonna give me an opportunity to uh, be more spur of the moment or a little more a little more unplanned and kind of pull out things in a different way i love both options so i just have things that are just laid in here uh right now but nothing that is as established as the ones that i did uh before so i like that's kind of how i've, I've done it the last few years where i like having those the first you know 10 to 12 days established that helps me get going with the project and then you know in my case knowing that i'm still going to be here showing up each day then i i also know that i have some flexibility coming up in terms of how i put some of these pages together all right so these guys have just the cute little red and white twine in there so we've got oh my goodness and in the thick of it i think that those are like perfect little stamps or perfect little sentiments for that so that's going to get tucked right in there i put the seven on the top that way you can see that there's uh, yeah, like that. Okay, and then the, ne the last thing I need to do is um, add a little bit of journaling. One of the things that I want to do or that I've been thinking about as I'm getting ready to do this journaling is that I do want to add, I want to stamp like a little title on here about the mess and it's not going to be embrace the mess. Maybe it's it is what it is or something. Something to that effect. I wanna have some little bit of a title on there and then add in my journaling. Okay, so one of the first things that I decided to do before I actually add in my journaling is I went over to my computer and I just put, it's just a big mess. And so what I wanna do is I wanna add it on here so that it's not just all, yay, Christmas, which I still love that part. I like that it can exist at the same time, right? It can be a mess and it can still be merry and I can really wanna clean it all up and I can not have enough time, and, and right, and, and, and. I know Liz would, uh, Liz Lamoureux would love that. Lots of ands, lots and lots of ands. Believe, it's just a big mess. That's just what it is. Okay. So I kinda wanna just get this on here, like, yes, that's what I wanna do. And I do wanna do a little fake, I'm gonna do a fake add-on of a, the stitching just to keep it consistent. And uh, let's see, I'll still go on the top there. I should have left a little more space, but this will be fine. And then I'll use red line tape to adhere this onto that shaker pocket. And then I'm still gonna probably stamp in red over here, just a little title. Whoever it was that recommended to me, this was probably a couple years ago now, to get some uh, non-stick small Fisker scissors, thank you, because these are so great. My other my other small Fisker scissors that I had were not non-stick and they kept getting stuck together because I'm cutting into things with adhesive, right? Um, so thank you. And if you haven't, if you don't have non-stick small scissors yet, I highly recommend that you treat yourself to some of those. All right, so I'm just putting, believe it's just a big mess. I'm actually just gonna lay that right on top. We can be still merry and bright and we can have all these fun things and it can be a big mess. Maybe I'll just say hello mess or something like that. Okay, we're going in, I'm gonna stamp the title on here and it's just gonna say it's a mess and then I'm gonna write a little bit underneath it. So it can be short and sweet journaling. Remember, it doesn't have to be long. I'll do another. I know that there will be some stories that coming up that will be longer ones. I also wanted to share with you guys this tip, the school tip that uh, Laura Wansick shared with me, I think earlier this year. And she, I think she might have gotten it from Kathy Zilski or from uh, maybe Jen McGuire, one of those guys. Uh, it's this little 
this little holder thing. I don't even know what. It's for something else. I'll, I'll find the link for you guys. And then keeping one of these little stamp chamois. I actually have a couple new ones that I'm probably going to transition to here soon. So they're wet. And then this can just be used to wipe off your stamps. It's not going to get this thing clean. I know there's some of you out there that hate my my <laughs> dirty thing there. Uh, but it, then it just stays wet and you put it in there and you close the lid and that's how that works. So that's kind of a, that's how I've been what I've been doing to clean my stamps. So thank you, Laura slash Kathy slash Jen or whoever else it was. do for this last little one here is I'm going to slip this over here so in case it goes off I can have it on the there we go so if you're following along at home and you're using similar things I might start this one off the edge a little bit and then you'll have it all both sides would go over the edge that would be my preference in a perfect world and so then you just store it right back in there and you close it up it sits on my table that's been really easy these were stamps that we offered with our one little word collection last year. This is what I used on that big, that big full stamped page. I think these are out of stock, but this is if this is something that you want with stamps. Often what we do is we have notify of me's on some of our stamp sets that have sold out. I'm not sure if this one's still listed in there, but this is one that I've really enjoyed using. anyway even though there's already lines on there just I like it it goes along with the mess <laughs> all right so there we go this is pretty you know quick and easy one because I'd already done some of that in advance so we've got the photos on top of the cards again you can tell any story with this um, I did repeat stamping over here I've got the couple little phrases on there I added on the it's just a big mess and then it's a mess over here and then a little bit of handwritten journaling. So that is a look at my uh, story number seven. We'll be back uh, tomorrow with story eight. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and we'll see you back here tomorrow.